Aubrey, how's your day going so far? I'm doing great, Jessica. How are you? I am wonderful. It is sunny here. It's sunny and it's warm, warm ish, but it's not raining. And so I am so happy. And we get to talk about grammar today, which makes a lot of students happy. Yes, I know. We love doing grammar episodes because we know how much you guys love them. We get a lot of feedback about that. So that's a good note that if you hate grammar episodes, send us feedback because you might be the (laughs) quiet ones and we're hearing from everyone saying, yes, give us more grammar episodes. So let us know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Send us your questions and episode ideas, guys. Support at allearsenglish.com. So before we get to the grammar lesson for today, uh, we are going to teach you three very specific sentence structures that are complex and therefore get you higher scores for grammar. We'll tell you how you can use these in speaking and writing, all right, and why this increases your grammar score. But before we get to those, guys, um, we have a super special offer happening. It's just starting today, guys, Um, but this offer finishes June 6th, next Tuesday. Um, Aubrey, what am I talking about? Yes, guys, maybe you're not aware that we have a grammar course that is actually amazing. It teaches you the grammar rules you actually need to know in a very specific, clear way. So on the IELTS exam, you can use this to get the highest grammar score possible without being distracted by lots of grammar that doesn't matter. So you guys should check it out. You can go to allearsenglish.com slash grammar to hear about this deal. You're going to be able to get 10% off. And what else, Jessica, something we've never done before. This is very exciting. Yeah, I, I came up with this because I, I it, it sounds very fun. Guys, the first 10 people to sign up for our Grammar Plus Speaking Skills course, the first 10 people get a special bonus for free, um, how to start the conversation. There's so much great ideas and topics in there. And all of this can be used for IELTS speaking. Um, so everyone gets 10% off, guys, with the coupon code GRAMMAR. But if you are one of the first people to sign up, you also get that special uh, conversation bonus. So go to allearsenglish.com slash grammar, coupon code grammar. All right. Grammar, grammar, grammar. I love that we made that competitive, right? First 10 in, get a prize. You guys know us. We love a competition. (laughs) I know. I was like, let's, let's try something new. This sounds fun. Um, All right. So we are doing this episode because we had a question from a student um, about how to learn the structures needed for a high score. And it that's so hard. Like, where do you start? There are so many kinds of sentences, adverb clauses, conditionals, adjective clauses, blah, blah, blah. So what do we do? The best thing to do, guys, is one step at a time. Learn three complex structures. Learn it very well, perfectly. Use them over and over again, right? And then once you have those perfected, learn some more. Yes, exactly. It's such good advice because if you're trying to learn all of them, it's just too much. And there's a very high likelihood that you won't do any of it right. But if you can get it down to a science, to a very clear formula of how to use three complex sentences and know you'll do them right, you'll be confident on test day. You'll be able to get that seven or plus on the grammar score. Um, And guys, It's important that as an IELTS student, you are studying entire sentence structures, not just tiny little rules like verb tense and stuff like that. Okay. Like you need to have complete sentence structures that you are learning. So let's get to it. The first is a relative clause with who. So we chose this relative clause because I think it's the easiest to use when you're trying to spice up your language, right? When you are describing people, it is such a specific thing that like, it's impossible to use this wrong, you know? But this like, is where I see students when you're describing a person. I often, when we're doing speaking tests, I hear them start to revert to simple sentences because I yeah. can see that you're sort of thinking of descriptive things and it comes out in individual thoughts, right? Totally. She's very kind. She's in intelligent and you sort of start listing and going back to simple sentences. So this is where you're going to need to practice. We're going to give you this way to use a relative clause with who to describe people. And that's where you're going to want to pull yourself out of that tendency to use simple sentences and use these more complex structures to describe a person. 
Yeah, totally. Because remember your grammar score, it doesn't just depend on the number of mistakes you make, right? If you only use simple sentences and like a couple compound sentences and they're all perfect, you still can't get higher than a six for grammar, right? And that's with like zero mistakes. You have to have complicated structures. All right. So on speaking, here's an example. Uh, my dad, who is always watching cooking shows, actually is not a very good cook. <laughs> <laughs> so you're often like asked to describe your family or friends or, you know, who taught you how to cook, stuff like that. Um, so this sentence, I think, is great for the speaking test. Yes, it's all about combining those simple sentences in an interesting way, a more complex structure. Here's an example for the writing exam, right? Um, students should always be respectful toward their teachers who have a massive job to do. You can see how that could be two short, simple sentences. Totally. We're combining them to add interest and to boost that grammar score. Exactly. Exactly. And that sentence would be a perfect like topic sentence for a body paragraph. And then you go on to describe the thousands of requirements and tasks that a teacher has to accomplish. Right. Yes. Um, okay. So the next structure guys, this is a very impressive structure. And this is actually something we teach in our writing course, uh, for writing task one guys, this is how you learn grammar in three keys IELTS. We give you the exact structures you need and then just just use those. And that's all you need for task one. You get a high grammar score. Boom, done. All right. But not just for task one, right? This uh, grammar structure could be useful in a number of ways. So this is a complex sentence with an adverb clause and an independent clause, right? Combining those. So the dependent clause is before plus verb ing. And then you add that on to an independent clause, subject, verb, object. So it sounds complicated, but it's not. Aubrey, what's the speaking example? Yeah, for example, if you're asked about how long you've lived somewhere, you could say, before moving to the city, I actually lived in a super small town for most of my life. So you see this adverb clause before moving to the city, which mm -hmm. is describing your independent clause. And it's really boosting how complicated, how high level that sentence is. Yeah, the before plus verb ing clause is so easy, guys, um, it, because it's simple, it's straightforward, like the grammar is very obvious before verb ing, and then an independent clause, right? But it's complex and impressive. So this is a great example of something that you can learn exactly how to write it, practice this over and over in different sentences, and then you'll be able to use it in speaking and writing. So here's a writing sentence example. And this would be for writing task two. Before enacting any changes to the status quo, governments should ensure that all current systems are functioning properly. Wow, that's a complicated sentence. That's impressive. <laughs> I actually uh, wrote this sentence I know. <laughs> and it's funny because I'm sort of thinking like mm, task two in general, right? Oh, governments <laughs> were talking about how they have to make changes. So this is kind of a little general <laughs> now that I look at it. It's like great. what answer would this be for? You could actually use this in a lot of different task twos. <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, you totally could. Um, all right. That's great. And then of course, like I said, this is great for writing task one change over time graphs. Um, Cause you could be like before um, boosting sales, to a peak in 2021, uh, sales were stable for much of the decade, whatever. Uh, but very easy to use when you're talking about time. All right, so the last is a conditional. This is such a great example of all the, so many different kinds of sentences. And we're giving you three very different ones, guys, that if we mix these up and use them well, you could get such a high grammar score. All right. So first conditional, right? The most common one that we use, you guys have to perfect this for speaking and writing. And this is just present simple and will. All right. So Aubrey, what's the example? So for speaking, you might say, if I immigrate to Canada, I'll have to buy some warmer clothes. So you're talking about a conditional, something that's conditional upon a choice upon you moving to Canada. And, but it's so simple, right? To just have if whatever you might do, and then I will have to do something else, right? Very high level, really. But like you said, so simple, so easy to use. Now that I think about it, like we did a really great job choosing these sentence structures because the first one, 
the relative clause is mostly like present simple, right? You're describing people as they are now, like the truth about people, right? Present simple. And then the second one, that adverb clause, talking about the past, right? And then now we're talking about the future with the first conditional. You're talking about something that will probably happen in the future, something that is likely to occur, right? So here's the example for writing. If people are mindful of each other, the world will be a better place. Right. I think that's possible. I want to be hopeful that that is possible. Be hopeful. That's really a good point. We've given you no matter what time frame you're talking about, no matter what verb tense you need, present, past, future, one of these will work. Right. But it will take practice. You can't go in on test day having just heard this podcast episode and totally. expect to be able to do it perfectly. Right. You need to be using them in your sample essays. You need to be using them when you practice answering speaking questions so that you're very comfortable and are sure that you can use them right on test day. Totally. Um, and guys, if you are worried about your grammar, remember we have a very special offer for our grammar and speaking skills course. So it's not just about grammar. It's also about pronunciation and speaking skills. So the first 10 people get that very special bonus, but everyone gets 10% off before next Tuesday. So go now, allersenglish.com slash grammar coupon code grammar. All right. Awesome. Aubrey, thanks for uh, talking about these uh, very impressive structures today. Yeah. So fun. I'll see you next time, Jessica. Bye. Bye.